our communities are in dire need. With high unemployment, lack of adequate health care, a growing number of single parent homes, and the need for a quality education for our children, it's up to all of us to make sure that we're doing our part to help our fellow man. But in this me generation, where many are more self-absorbed in their own lives, volunteerism is dramatically decreasing. Local charitable organizations, fire and ambulance departments, and church and community groups are having a hard time finding people to carry out their mission. There is, however, one group that is there and ready to help, the Independent Order of Odd Fellows, a rather strange name for a remarkable organization. The Odd Fellows is a fraternal organization that has been caring for their communities for over 200 years. During the 1800s, it was considered odd to organize people to give aid to those in need, odd in an extraordinary way, and thus the Odd Fellows were born. The organization, much like the Masons, was founded in England on the broad belief of a universal brotherhood of man. In what some consider to be the beginning of trade unions, Masons were predominantly stonecutters, and the Odd Fellows came from various other odd trades. When there were no social programs available to assist a member's family, the Odd Fellows were there to help, to visit the sick, relieve the distressed, bury the dead, and educate the orphan, principles the organization abides by to this very day. Spreading their ideals of friendship, love, and truth, this group, often called the Three Link Fraternity, uses three chain links to stand for strength in union, a chain that binds the members together. Odd Fellowship in America began in the early 1800s when Thomas Wildey, an ironsmith from London, arrived in Baltimore. The city was in the grip of a yellow fever epidemic. The economy was troubled, there was mass unemployment, and children had lost their parents to illness. Wildey was an orphan himself, and the IOOF pledge to educate the orphan sprang from his personal childhood experiences. Wildey and John Welch, another English immigrant, wanted to help, so they decided to establish an Oddfellow Lodge. They placed an ad in the Baltimore American newspaper and found three other members to form the very first lodge in America. On April 16, 1819, at the Seven Stars Tavern, Washington Lodge No. 1 was born. It's a fraternity, and as a fraternity, it has social aspects, and it is a group of people who come together and learn through examples that are exemplified in the degrees that are conferred, and then carry those examples forward in their lives. Odd Fellowship and its sister organization, the Rebecca's, grew over the next century with lodges in nearly every town. From 1870 to 1910, Oddfellow membership was larger than the Masons. In fact, with the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, many immigrants joined fraternal organizations to obtain financial security and establish social networks. And help they did caring for brothers who were ill, those who were injured or lost their lives in dangerous jobs, building orphanages to care for those who had no parents, and making sure children of members received a quality education. But as times changed, so did the need for this type of organization and the help the Oddfellow Lodges offered. The Great Depression in 1929 made it necessary for people to care for themselves before they could worry about others. And in 1933, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, an odd fellow himself, introduced the New Deal, social and economic reforms that created social security. The need for fraternal organizations diminished. After World War II, the introduction of television, video games, changing society and recreational behavior, and the internet caused a decline in the organization's membership. Even though times have changed dramatically, Oddfellow and Rebecca Lodges here in Pennsylvania are actively involved in providing for the needs of the community. 
There aren't any orphanages run by the organization today, but hundreds of thousands of dollars are made available in scholarships and low-interest loans for members and their families to ensure a quality education is able to be obtained in these rough economic times. And there are still children in need. That's why the Independent Order of Oddfellows here in Pennsylvania is a major supporter of youth-oriented projects around the state. Nearly 300,000 children in the United States have some sort of arthritis. The most prevalent form is juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. The Oddfellows are major sponsors of Camp JRA, a six-day residential camping experience for children ages 8 to 18. The Oddfellows are the reason the Camp JRA exists. They, they provided a seed money from the very beginning. Um, our first year of camp, they, they paid for the kids to go to Knoebels, which is a local amusement park, to have fun for the day. Um, they provide scholarship money every year so campers can attend the program. Um, on, in years where you know the economy's had more trouble, or really any year, you know our families need assistance to get to camp. Um, the Arthritis Foundation is a nonprofit organization, and we have all these expenses for this facility and supplies and the buses and 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 so many so many different so many different activity supplies. And um, the Odd Fellow support is able to help us. To lower those costs so that we can get more kids to camps and more kids on scholarship and um, it's made a tremendous difference. It's a special place where children with arthritis and other rheumatic diseases can have fun, learn about the disease, and form social bonds with others who share their challenges. Camp JRA actually changed my life and I can say it and it, it may not mean as much to everyone but when I left for camp I was a very shy, depressed, introverted person. I didn't like talking about arthritis. I was in denial that I had arthritis even though I had had it as a diagnosis for 10 years. I had never really met anyone else with arthritis so I was just very very depressed. But when I left camp after that one week, that seven days of that camp experience, I came home and my mom said, who are you and what have you done with my daughter? I'm outgoing, I'm positive, I'm happy. And it's because I'm allowed to limp at camp. I'm allowed to have pain. My hip is allowed to be hurting and I'm allowed to show that because everybody else here understands me. The Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, the statewide governing body, also oversees two skilled nursing and assisted living facilities, the Middletown Home near Harrisburg and Orchard Manor at Grove City in the western part of the state. The donations that we receive through the Oddfellows and Rebecca's help make us the home that we are, um, doing the little extras for residents, staying afloat, um, and we have a lot of programs that I don't know that a lot of other homes do and every resident gets a personally picked Christmas gift and that is all through Oddfellow and De Rebecca donations. Uh, there are a couple different programs that all the lodges in Pennsylvania contribute to and uh, we bought our porch furniture and our hanging baskets with that. And but the backbone of the Odd Fellows in Pennsylvania are the individual lodges, members of the community who come together at lodge meetings on a regular basis to advance the principles of the order, helping the community to become a better place in which to live. It's fun to be a part of this kind of organization where all of the funds go towards the entities that we support as a lodge. It's, it's just great, the, the whole interaction. Charities from all over the state are supported by their local Oddfellow Lodges. Some lodges raise funds the good old-fashioned way by holding a community breakfast, a special fundraiser car show, manning a booth at a local bazaar, or even sponsoring a monthly spaghetti supper. The Oddfellows raise necessary funds to help these organizations to further their critical work. One of the best reasons for helping someone is having had an experience yourself where someone helped you. And you know, that does an awful lot. And when they see, when a fellow will see how we help and how we're constantly trying to help, it, it, it gets them started. It gets them thinking. There are other ways the Odd Fellows and Rebecca's lend a hand, and it's unique to their individual community needs. When the local Meals on Wheels was forced to move its operation, the Odd Fellows stepped in to provide free space in their building and also spearheaded a $75,000 campaign to provide new equipment and adequate storage facilities. The Odd Fellows and Rebecca's are there, collecting blood for the Red Cross, involved in sponsoring community events, 
and lending a helping hand. It's something to do to go meet people on a Monday evening and it's also a way to give back to the community and we do, you know, at our meetings we do other things. We, we you know, make dinners for commu like a community organization and it, it, it makes me feel good to be able to do something for somebody else. During these difficult times, your neighbors need your help more than ever. You need to get involved and be an active participant who shows they really care. Join the Odd Fellows and Rebecca's. Are you odd enough to become a member? If you care about your community, you are. <laughs>